even when yeah. there's no cameras or anything, if I'm talking to someone, it's still gonna be on. Like, okay, I'm extroverted and I'm charming, you know? <laughs> like, hey, hi. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Outliers podcast. I'm your host, Arya Chang, and alongside Olivia Sabatino, we're on a journey to interview as many different professionals from different industries as we can. The goal of this podcast is to expose you guys to various career paths so that you may discover the best profession suited for you. This episode, we'll be interviewing actor Graham Vershare. Since 2014, Graham has taken on several roles in films and TV shows like The Good Doctor and Summer of 84. What's more, he even co-starred in Disney's Stargirl with Grace Vanderbilt last March. I hope that this episode acts as a guide to anyone who wants to break into the acting industry. Huge shout out to Graham for being so generous with his time. You can find more information about him and us on our Instagram, at McGee Outliers. But enough of that, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, why don't, we just, why don't we just get started? Liv, do you want to go ahead? Yeah. So um, the first question that we have for you is misconceptions about being a child actor that people often get wrong. So things that people perceive that you don't know or feel to be true. Um, you know, like I, I thought about this and I had a hard time because I couldn't, I couldn't think of a lot of things that were like real misconceptions about um, just like working as an actor, because it seems like, I don't know, it seems like a lot of people are on the same page, but um, I guess I should clarify, if you're working as an actor, you're not working a lot of the time, like you'll, you'll be preparing for your next job or, or doing auditions and everything, but it's not like, unless you're a regular on a series, you're not going to go to work every day. We wanted to know, because you did Stargirl, obviously, and so we wanted to know what a typical day on set looked like for you. One of the crazy things is that it can be crazy variable. There were some days on, on Stargirl where we were filming at night. So we'd go to set at 4 p.m. And then you'd have breakfast at, at 6 p.m. Um, and then lunch at like 12.30 or something. And then like the next week you could be getting up at 4 a.m. Because you need the morning light. So it's, it's a little crazy. And there are, pro there are protections that make it easier when you're working as a, as a child actor. But then once you're 18, that kind of, it kind of all goes out the window, except you need eight hours between when you stop working and when you start working the next day. Because there are times that it's made it like a lot harder. Like we'll be, we have one shot left to get and it's like, no, we have to wrap you in, in six minutes. So we have one take. Oh, like yeah. that's, that, that happens all the time. Like, because of that, like going, that movie where we had where four kids we were filming at night, that was summer of 84. And we had two or three takes for any, any shot. So oh, wow. it, it makes things really hard. So our next section is we want to know what you feel is the best part of your job. Like what, how has it benefited you? I don't know. I love, I love being on set so much. I have so many stories just of the people I've been able to meet um, and the places I've been able to go just for work, which is crazy to me to think about. Um, do you want to talk more about like your stories and the places you've been? Like, cause I know for, um, I don't know which movie it was, but you had to go down to New Mexico, right? Yeah. For Stargirl, I was living for two and a half, three months in a place I'd never been before <laughs> in my life. Those kinds of jobs, you've got a group of, a group of kids. And you're working for 12 hours a day with them and you, you get to know each other really quickly. And those, I like, I, I, I love those people with my whole heart. And I think like we, we connected so strongly. There were, there were some people there that were from Albuquerque, but then a bunch of people were just like shoved into this apartment complex and we were like, okay, we don't know anyone here except each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, and it, Albuquerque, I, I loved it there. The sunsets were something else. And I imagine that as an actor, you have to like get used to living. I mean, of course, like Stargirl was, I think, your first opportunity at doing this, but I'm sure that it'll happen much more in the future. Getting used to and adapting to different cultures, especially like if you have to live somewhere for two to three months, right? Yeah. Do you have trouble or did you ever feel kind of like isolated being the only Canadian working in the States? They like to tease me a lot about it. 
because like also just my personality i apologize a lot like people think of a canadian accent as like an eastern canadian like really noticeable accent but like even from vancouver there's still a noticeable accent in the way that we say sorry or like about and i've had i've had people tell me like hey you need to say that with an american accent i'm like it's different <laughs> So now I, I just say, because I've had to say it so much in like auditions and stuff that my default is just to say sorry with an American accent. And I, I feel like I've lost a part of myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that too. Like my, I, I lived in Barcelona for a bit. And so my, my friends there, they send me TikToks of Canadians and they're the most stereotypical <laughs> TikToks ever. They're like shirtless dudes holding hockey sticks and like wiping their car windshield. I'm like, no, this is not <laughs> us, okay? We're not that strange. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of advice for you. What I had so much fun doing, Americans will believe anything about Canada. Anything. <laughs> <laughs> really? Anything. I told, I told one of them that music was banned. It was illegal. It was completely <laughs> illegal. <laughs> and he believed me for like an hour. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's, um, oh, that's so good. Oh, my God, that's great. Uh -huh. he's, he's one of the sweetest people I've ever met as well. So I, I felt bad <laughs> tricking him <laughs> like that. But it was so funny. I, I mean, I, I can get into this. Um, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably get into this more later. But like, it's, I'm, I'm lucky that it's like a, it's a fantastic job. I have so much fun. I, <laughs> there's a tent. I mean, it's closed now because of the pandemic. They, they're not allowed to have the tent anymore. But there's a tent that's just filled with food. You go and you take whatever you want. It's all free. It's amazing. Uh, section three, which goes into like the cons of acting that a lot of people just don't know about. My first one is like the biggest challenge you think most actors and actresses will face in their career. And maybe you can even talk about like your own challenges that you've had. Um, I, so everyone will have like... A, a hard role that'll be difficult for them at some point. But I think the hardest part about this line of work um, that'll, that'll it'll weed out a lot of people who don't want to do it. 95% of the time you're being rejected, like actively. Like they're saying like, no, we don't want you for this. And then they never talk to you again. You'll spend like two hours filming an audition if it's a really long one. And then you'll never hear anything back. And it can go on like that if, if you're, if you get an unlucky streak, it could go on like that for months or years, even if it's really bad, or you could be working nonstop. And there's so much of it is outside of your control, but it's like constantly being told no and not even why. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough. Like you got to be able to sort of acknowledge that so much of it is completely out of your control and you have to not blame yourself for that. And you have to try no matter how many times you get rejected. I've been pretty fortunate in my, in my career so far to be working most of the time and then to just not have anything for like a significant amount of time. It feels bad. Mm -hmm. So it, it can be really hard sometimes. Like I've got bills, they, they pay you good money. So I've got savings and I will be fine. But it's like, it's still like, it's not fun. That part's really not fun. Mm -hmm. Again, there are jobs that are hard to do and there are inter interviews where they'll give you hard questions and it's like really stressful. <laughs> um, there's so many There's so many different ways that it can be really fun and really not fun yeah so then that kind of leads in funny you say that because it kind of leads into what our next question is and i don't think i put this on the sheet but you know regardless of what career you go into there's going to be different forms of stress that you have to deal with and so now i kind of want to talk about like this kind of stress that you have to deal with that could be like busy schedules that could be right like paying bills on time and that could also be um i think a big one is politics people don't talk about acting in politics and that sort of thing yeah, like a lot of people listening to this won't know me. So just so you know, I'm I'm a very stressed out person all the time, literally all the time. When there are stressful parts of the job, it, it's pretty bad. <laughs> and there are a lot of things like I get really um, more so in the past. I'm a lot better about it now just because I've sort of settled into what I need to do. But like I used to get really, really anxious about interviews. I haven't always been good at talking. I kind of learned how to do that, how to talk 
just for like these interviews. It's part of the job as well. That's something that I wasn't told is that publicity is um, a part of it. And I hate publicity because I'm so anxious about it. Um, having to say the right thing and then it's, yeah. it's, on, it's on camera and people are watching it yeah. to get an idea of what you're like. Some of the stuff, like if you told me what I'd be signing up for when I first started acting, I would have gone and uh, been an engineer. Um, <laughs> like there was one time when Disney Plus was announced and I, I was on stage for part of the interview there. And that room was full and I couldn't see the back of the room. And I was just like, oh my God, <laughs> I will be okay. I'm going to say the words that I should say <laughs> and then leave the stage. <laughs> and I think like it's a trillion people there. And it, some of that stuff is really, it's not what you think about before you do it. By the time you get there, it's part of the job. <laughs> it's, it's rewarding when it goes well, uh, but it can be really stressful, especially for someone like me. <laughs> There are sometimes where it'll be like, hey, we've got 10 minutes to get this shot. That last one wasn't quite right, but we don't have time and we have to move on. And I'll be like, oh my God, I hate this. I need to hold it. give me, what, give us one take to do this perfectly. I'll be right. And like, I'm, I'm thinking of one specific instance in my head where it was like, we had to wrap and we had zero time to get the shot. There's a, a lot of pressure a lot of the time. So that can be stressful. Also, it's a lot of memorization, and it's, uh, it's not fun if you forget something. I have a good memory, and I'm, I'm good with my lines most of the time, but like it's, that's another stressful part. Like If you forget a line in a scene, yeah. people are going to be mad at you. Uh, so this is a spontaneous question, but you talked about how the person for this job has to be someone who can face rejection and over and over again, because like you said, this is sometimes you have projects and roles, that you pour tons of time and heart into, and then you just gotta know, and that's it, you have to move on, right? Yeah, it's brutal, really, putting it into words like this, it's brutal, like you can, you can film a self-tape, and then film another self-tape for the same role, and each of those can take like, up to like two hours, mm -hmm. and then maybe even another one, and if they really like you, they'll bring you to LA to work with the director and maybe someone who's already cast. Even after that, you might never hear anything. And it can be as inane as that. You could lose a job or get a job because you look like someone else, especially right. working as a kid. Like that's, that's most of it. Yeah, so my next question, um, any, are there any sacrifices you've had to make to being an actor? Um, it's, I, I thought about this. It's hard to articulate a single sacrifice that I've made. Like, it's not like I didn't have time anymore to take care of a, a pet and I had to get rid of a pet or anything. It's, it's, it's nothing like that, but it, it definitely makes a lot of normal things harder, like school specifically. I am a person who really hated school all the time. Um, I, I, I ended up switching schools to McGee and I, I, was, a, I was a lot happier there because there's, there's a lot more art people there. And they're, they're sort of more used to people missing school for that kind of thing. So it was a little easier. And my last school was like super academic, which is not me. <laughs> um, and it, it made things hard. But like if I, if I have to miss a day because there's an in-person audition that I need to go do, then suddenly I'm behind. And if I'm filming something and I miss a week, then suddenly I'm really far behind. And it's really hard to catch up if you miss mm -hmm. stuff in school. When I first switched to McGee, that was when I was filming Stargirl. I had gone to this school. Thanks, thankfully, my, my brother Toby had been there, had switched over the year before. So he knew people and he, he could talk to people and introduce me to people. Otherwise, I don't know what would have happened. Because I went for two days to this new school. And those two days were full of just me talking to these teachers for the first time and saying, hey, by the way, I'm going to be gone for the next two and a half months. Nice to meet you, by the way. Can I have all of the homework <laughs> so I don't fail? <laughs> it, it was not a, a fun couple of days. Um, I do have um, one other question, but it is quite similar. You have bills to pay now, right? Mm -hmm. And what's going through your mind? Like, that has to be a scary thing because as an actor your future is undetermined, right? Yeah. Is, is that a scary thing? It's terrifying. Yeah. No, you, you're so right. I've always been comfortable with saying like, okay, when I'm adult and I need to pay bills, I'll, I'll get a, a, like a regular 
job as well to to help with that Mm -hmm. just because you really don't want to be caught in a situation where you need it and you don't have it you could be a fine actor and never get any work i'm guessing it was well this is just like a conclusion to that which was basically if you want to be an actor you have to be prepared to take a side job it's smart if you're not okay with doing that then i would be very concerned for you if you're set on being an actor and you will only ever act i'm very worried about you that's not a good idea if you if you get a big break and like some big Marvel movie and then you're working job to job for the rest of your career, you're stupidly lucky. Mm-hmm. Like you, you really, <laughs> you got to be prepared. If, if you're not, it'll be pretty bad. So next section, Liv, do you want to introduce it? Sure. It's just kind of more of the financial side of getting started as an actor. Right. So just what do you feel is the kind of financial support you need as an actor? This is where it gets interesting. Yeah. Like I'm incredibly privileged to be able to do what I do and to be able to start as a kid. My parents were able to take time off work to go take me to an audition, right. to take me right. to an audition and to take me to set, to pay for an acting class. And I know there's a lot of people that don't have those opportunities and it makes it a lot harder to break into the industry. And like there are alternatives like you can get scholarships to to acting classes. Like there's a there's a organization that I really like in East Van called Project Limelight. They put on a show with a lot of kids that aren't as privileged as I am. It can be it can be really hard and I'm I'm really lucky. There are things you can do if you don't have any support for it. Like there are an acting class in school is is really great. Yeah. You'll get that kind of experience. Sort of get to get to know people cuz uh I think sometimes though they'll bring people in. That'll be a great way to uh, meet people and make connections, which would be really important if that's what you have to do to get in the door. If you you want to get experience on set, which I think is as important, if not more, than like classes and things, like a, a class won't be able to teach you what it's like on set. Just working as an extra as well will get you good experience and money as well. Right, right, yeah. Um. Part of the section is also the requirement. So like we talked about the financial side, right? But also the requirements as a person. An actor has to be one, very motivated and like, what's the word? Um, Like resilient almost every time they get rejected. What other skills and like soft skills, hard skills does, it, does an actor slash actress need? Like I've seen a, a huge variety of personalities that I've worked with. And some of them are like, they're there to be famous. <laughs> if you don't love being on set, I, I don't actually know what you'd be doing it for. Loving what you do. And again, resilient and dedicated, exactly like you said. What do you have to say about how good looks contribute to your acting career? Like, obviously, they have a massive effect. And you, I think, like, hope you don't mind, when one of your interviews, you said that the two biggest determinants of your acting career come to good looks and luck. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll say again what you look like is still annoyingly important. And again, most like these jobs come down to like the time of day that the director sees your tape. If you had like a bad hair day on the day that you filmed it, and then suddenly the director, she's just like not seeing the vibe and then you're gone. It's brutal because you could be a good actor and thrown out for arbitrary reasons. And I'm not saying they're wrong for that. I I know like just the vibe of a person in a role is still important. It's important, but it, it sucks because there's nothing you can do about it a lot of the time. I'm lucky because I look like a super average white dude, which is what a lot of producers think everyone wants to see. Because they, they want like a, a, a blank slate for the audience to project on, and I'm what they think that is. That's where the uh, like a huge diversity and whitewashing thing comes in, in Hollywood. Now with hard skills that you got to do. So obviously you said that memorization was a crucial one. Um yeah underrated (laughs) yeah what about being like extroverted and introverted because a lot of actors are introverted and so how does that come into play like do you have to do you have to get used to being pushed out of your comfort zone on a daily basis is that something you should expect it'll we should we should talk about physical acting skills as and this as well like this is like they're 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 separate things almost if you 
knew me at my old school, I was a completely different person. I wouldn't like heavily in my shell, like very, very anxious all the time um, and really bad at talking to people. <laughs> like, if you want to get deep, that's probably a part of the reason why I liked acting when I was, when I was younger because being given a script made things a lot easier and being told what to say and how to say it um, made things a lot easier. And that's part of how I learned how to talk to people well and <laughs> do better in this kind of thing. Yeah. Every week, people were sending me scripts of how real people talk. It was like, great. I can remember that. <laughs> so doing like publicity and interviews and networking as well, like even when yeah. there's no cameras or anything, if I'm talking to someone who I don't know very well and they might be important in my career, it's still going to be on. Like, okay, I'm extroverted and I'm charming, you know? <laughs> like, hey, hi. Right? <laughs> like, that's exactly yeah. what it is. I'm not like yeah. that at all. And like, I'm, I'm getting pretty real right now, but this is still me having to focus on what I'm saying and, and right, say the right, right thing and be good about it, you know? I exactly get that. Do you feel like as an actor, even off screen, when you're networking with these people, you have to put on this mask sometimes. How do you feel about this whole mask thing? Have you ever felt that before? A hundred percent all the time. It's absolutely a mask that like you, you put on and like, this is my, this is work mode. Like this is, it's public image, right? Like if I'm with my friends, I'll make a stupid joke. There's a different vocabulary, right? There's like a, a library of phrases that I can take from. These are ones, these are phrases that I know have a positive response. Like a lot of what people will see in interviews, 99% of the time, that's not what they are. We should probably move on to the next section, yeah? Yes. Um, yeah, so we just kind of want to know what you think that you've done to help your success in your career. Some of the advice I've gotten, like as a child actor, like people giving advice to me, and it's that when you're doing it as a kid, although you're making money and, and it's a job, you shouldn't be forcing yourself to do it. You should be treating it as a really serious sport. If right. you're not having fun, you shouldn't do it because you're, you're a kid. You shouldn't be worried about not having a job. That's crazy. So we just, our question is more of like, what, what's your mindset going into an audition and then coming out of an audition, right? Uh, auditions, yeah. Um, <laughs> it's pessimistic, but I always assume I'm not going to get something. And then if I do get it, it's a pleasant surprise. Otherwise, I've already accepted and it's gone. I think like doing everything you can. And then once you hit the send button or once you leave the room, it's just like I did everything I can. If I think about this, I'm going to get hopeful and that never ends well. <laughs> so I'm going to just pretend that I know I didn't get it and it'll be a surprise if I do. And that's, and that's, I don't think that'll work for everyone, but that's the only way I can manage just constant rejection, you know? And for Stargirl, I genuinely thought I bombed the audition so bad, um, the <laughs> final callback. And I was just like, I went home and I was just like, well, that would have been really fun. And then like yeah. the next week, I was like, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> I didn't bomb the audition. <laughs> I just thought I did because I'm delusional and that's what I do. And nowadays, 100% of the time, it'll be a self-tape. Sometimes, back in the old days, you'd go back, you'd go in person to audition in front of someone. Otherwise, you, you, you just, you get a reader, uh, you ask someone to read for you. So once you've, from the, the lines in front of blue screens, you do a slate and you say who you are and how tall you are and where you live. And then uh, for me, I just make it one file in iMovie and then I compress it. It's got to be 100 megabytes or less. And then you put it in a Dropbox folder and you send it back. And then you wait. This is definitely interesting for me. I did not know any of this. Remember, I didn't know about slating. And then I went to like my first audition and I remember Mr. Waterman was like, yeah, you've got a slate. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. There was one time I was, uh, I was really young and doing an audition in person and they asked me to do a slate and I... I think I didn't really know what to say. And they asked me just to say like, how, how you are? I was like, okay, I'm good. They had actually said how old you were and it was not fun 
it was not fun for a scared little boy. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that with us. <laughs> oh, and that was that was rock bottom. <laughs> um, is there any advice you'd give to your past self? Um, you should know that although it is one of the most rewarding jobs, I think, and it's so much fun. I'm, I'll be totally honest. Doing auditions really sucks. It's not fun because you're kind of just talking to yourself for like two hours and filming it. And I hate seeing my camera so much. I know I'm in the wrong career. <laughs> like, I hate seeing myself on camera. Like the, the stuff I've done publicity wise, if you told me that I, I would have to post on social media for my job, which I'm terrible at, I don't, I need to, I need to so badly, but I don't know what to post. Right, right. <laughs> you should know that there are parts of it that aren't fun. It's a tough industry because most people aren't going to be super successful, right? And there's nothing, there's a lot of the time you can do the best, you just have to do the best you can and hope. Um, and like, I did the best I can and I've been pretty lucky with it. But like, it, it's tough. You got to be able to deal with that. Let me, let me paint a picture, actually, which might be better. Say I have like a sibling. They're my age. So they're, you're younger than you, Graham. And they took acting class and they really love it. Um, but they have like, maybe they have parents that don't support it. They're just like, play the safe side. But they like acting and they have no idea what to do. Like they're graduating in a year. They're Right now they're signing up for universities. Is there anything right. you feel like they should know before they take this giant risk? Or I have a couple personal opinions that you should take with a grain of salt. If you're graduating, take a gap year. <laughs> and that gives you more time to, to do things like this. Again, a great idea is taking acting classes. Like short term ones, there are workshops that you can do that are like two weeks and it'll be like intensive and you can make like a, a demo reel uh, that they'll show to a bunch of agents. That's how I got my agent uh, in oh, the very beginning is doing an intensive like that. It was two weeks and then there was a presentation, a bunch of agents and managers and wow. I, got, I got signed from there. So that's a great way to get started. Is there anything else you think should be shared and that is pretty important? If you don't know what you want to do, I'll be honest, I think acting probably wouldn't be good. If you really want to do it, then that's a starting point. Then that's a good place to start, and I think you should keep going for it. But if you don't know what to do, then <laughs> go for something more stable. That's all for this episode of the Outliers Podcast. If you're grade 12 or grade 11 or whatever grade you're in and you're listening right now, and you are curious about any career that you're interested in, DM us because we want to know from you guys who we should interview next. This is the whole purpose of the podcast. So any feedback helps. To message us, we have an Instagram at McGee Outliers or we have a website, McGeeOutliers.com. But that's all for this episode. We hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one.